everyone welcome to medical dialogues i am dr nandita mohan and today i will be taking you all to explore the world of rare diseases and my topic for today is noonan disease now to help us understand this in a little bit of detail understand its symptoms the causative factors the diagnostic tests as well as, well as the treatment mm-hmm. aspect we have with us today dr parth devendra dalal who is a pediatrician in pune and also a committed pediatric intensivist with quaternary level pre- uh, pediatric critical care training and also having a keen academic interest He has experience of 5 plus years in this field and Dr Parth has successfully managed critically sick children with various simple or complex cases in his career so far <laughs> and he is currently associated with Manipal Hospital in Pune as a consultant in the pediatrics and pediatric critical care department so welcome to medical dialogue sir it's really a pleasure to be interviewing you here today yeah my pleasure to be with you all thank you great great so now sir we talking about noonan disease uh, we are talking about even the aspect of rare disease so if i club both both together uh, why is this disease classified as a rare disease if you can highlight also on the most common symptoms of noonan syndrome and how do they typically present uh, in children <coughs> talk about so basically this noonan syndrome is an autosomal dominant disease and uh, it's one of the rhesopathies so if you say that uh, among the rhesopathies for example neurofibromatosis 1 or castello syndrome so among this this is the uh, commonest one but if you see overall so we can say yeah this is a rarest uh, of the disease you can classify it as a rare disease and uh, okay. uh, regarding your second question regarding common symptoms signs and symptoms so uh, i would say uh, there are few consistent symptoms also like uh, short stature or uh, it, it, there is a uh, uh, excavatum keratinitum then uh, pulmonary stenosis so all these are consistent they are found in mostly all the children and other common symptoms like uh, renal anomalies liver anomalies then uh, 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 failure to thrive so all that is dependent on how you manage the patient further yeah and the peculiar thing about this uh, is that uh, it is unremarkable in the birth at, at birth so basically it uh, the disease evolves so uh, short stature or failure to cry or heart disease or any other symptoms like typical facial features uh, will not be appreciated at birth so it evolves and uh, so mostly all ca- mostly the cases are diagnosed between 6 months to 1 year of age when it is appreciable okay okay so uh, as you mentioned that it is as the development of a child increases that's when you get to better diagnose it i think uh, so so coming to the diagnosis uh, how is this diagnosed in pediatric patients you mentioned that this is a time frame which usually occurs in about 6 months to 1 year of age so are there any tests or diagnostic criteria that is laid out to help understand if the, if a child has noonan syndrome so interestingly uh, in this era of uh, molecular genetic testing Uh, still noonan syndrome is diagnosed by clinical judgment so uh, there are uh, like uh, there there is a classification uh, like major and minor classification in that uh, uh, short stature failure to thrive excavatum carinatum so all that are considered as major criteria and uh, minor criteria is like the height is less than uh, 10 centile or uh, any one of this what i mentioned is a minor criteria so basically uh, the overall it's a clinical judgment and clinical diagnosis but yeah uh, if if we talk about a common scenario like uh, practically what we usually encounter is if a, if a, there is a in utero diagnosis of uh, knuckle thickness increase in knuckle thickness or uh, uh, there is a polyhydromnios so we suspect some uh, syndromic presentation it's a it's an example of synd- syndromic presentation basically we suspect some uh, mainly commonly we suspect down syndrome so we do karyotyping now if the karyotyping is normal then we have to suspect noonan syndrome and then we can run some test so uh, if if suppose a parent is already having noonan syndrome then it's clear cut that if, if the child is having dysmorphic features then it can be uh, we are more sure it it will be noonan so in that case we can directly go for genetic uh, testing so if we talk about genetic testing there are two types basically if we are not considering noonan syndrome as our diagnosis if we are vaguely seeing that the child is dysmorphic then we can go for whole exome sequencing so that will uh, catch all the abnormal uh, genes present and if we are sure like just i gave an example that uh, if the mother is or father is uh, noonans 
and uh, then the child has dysmorphic features then we are somewhat sure that th- this is a newman syndrome so in that case we can go for a specific gene that is single gene identification testing so that we can do and the most common gene is uh, ttn11 uh, and uh, yeah so it's again it's a autosomal dominant uh, gene okay I, i want to mention one more gene which is uh, lztr1 why it is important okay. because uh, uh, most of the genes which are associated with noonan syndrome are autosomal dominant but mm-hmm. uh, this gene is autosomal recessive so we need to take care that if the child is not presenting the as a noonans but it can carry forward the gene the abnormal gene to their next generation so it has to be basically genetic counseling it is very important to know the gene so definitely sir that is a technological aspect which is definitely improved in the diagnostic era uh, so now you mentioned about the diagnosis mainly confining to genetic counseling and genetic testing at the early stages so if you can explain the typical growth and developmental challenges uh that children actually face uh with once they are diagnosed with uh, noonan syndrome are there any specific developmental challenges uh, there are a lot of challenges actually uh, like uh, uh, see uh, there can be physical growth challenge or developmental challenge if we talk about physical growth the short stature or weight as i have already told it will not appear at birth so it evolves and uh, even your failure to thrive Uh, there are feeding difficulties a child is having congenital heart disease so all that is going to cause failure to thrive uh in a child and uh, that will be appreciated at the age of 2 to 3 years and not at birth and uh, again this this uh, retarded growth parameters will continue till puberty and the good thing is that the adult in the adulthood the child will uh, acquire its uh, normal height we can say it's no low normal but it will be in the normal range so that's a good part of it and uh, <coughs> regarding weight and uh, stature also uh then uh, yeah so uh, other other aspect of this question is uh, developmental abnormalities so yeah definitely the child uh, will be having developmental abnormalities like a uh, uh, gross motor delay fine motor delay uh, he'll be having and uh, uh, there will be language abnormality there is a defi- uh, hearing deficiency uh, hearing impairment will be there which can lead to language problems then intellectual disability and uh, behavioral problems irritability so all that Uh, will uh, associated with the hearing impairment and here also there is a good thing that uh, a simple hearing aid will solve all this issues in this okay okay so coming to the next question that is the treatment aspect uh, specific therapies or uh, any interventions also for managing uh, symptoms and complications that are associated <coughs> with uh, noonan disease or noonan syndrome so before the treatment actually the evaluation and screening is very important now we have diagnosed that the child is having noonan syndrome but mm-hmm. uh, so uh, and we have we have read our literature also the list of complications which can happen in noonan syndrome and which is happening like in uh, noonan's congenital heart disease is very common 70 to 80 percent of the child uh, children will have chds and uh, intellectual disability 25% will have intellectual disability so all that we know so just we have to find out whether that is present in the child or not so evaluation and screening is more important and uh, yeah simultaneously we have to treat that also uh, uh, the most common thing is constitutional growth delay so in that growth hormones are very helpful uh, it is fda approved also and uh, and the good thing is that uh, the the child will uh, it the catch up the final better height if you give growth hormone and uh, the next will be uh, like feeding if there is feeding difficulty you can uh, give ng feeding uh, you can uh, give gastrostomy feeding so all that you can uh, just to avoid failure to thrive and uh, various uh, chds as i told you uh, there can be pulmonic stenosis there can be uh, asd atrioventricular defect t- tetralogy of fellor so all this is very common and so on time surgical measure has to be taken so early refer to the specialist cardiothoracic surgeon uh, will solve this and uh, there are other things like genital urinary syndrome so then again you have to send to that specialist uh, bleeding diastasis is very common in the in such children so we need to uh, diagnose that early we need to uh, investigate the coagulation profile of the child uh, what factor is deficient so that we can replenish that factor it will be easy job then and uh, uh, hearing impairment as we have talked already so simple hearing aid we have to provide and we can uh, avoid hell lot of 
signs and symptoms like language delay intellectual disability lot of things we can avoid because of that and one more important thing which uh, is necessary is uh, to screen for malignancy because uh, 4% of this children uh, will acquire malignancy till 20 20 years of age so most commonly is gmml and uh, other solid tumors rhabdomyosarcoma all that also very common and again here also the good part is it's a benign course even if the child is having gmml uh he will not having that will have that malignant course it will be benign course okay. so there is a problem but the solution is also there and, and it's uh, quite uh, encouraging results are there that's actually a good highlight point i think if uh, it all comes to organic evaluation so each organ has to be specifically evaluated screened thoroughly first <coughs> and then only you can narrow down and come to the diagnosis and then as you mentioned treatments lot of treatment aspects organic if evaluation is done and you identify the disease then accordingly the treatment is also provided so in a nutshell i think the challenges you mentioned are can be overcome if they are all come down to prompt uh, di- early diagnosis and provided treatment accordingly yes so uh, sir now coming to my next question uh, what are the potential <laughs> long term health concerns uh, for children uh, with noonan syndrome and as this is basically if you can highlight on how do they challenge as they grow into adulthood the thing is that in adulthood there are no new problems going to come so it has been documented in many literatures that uh, whatever problems are there in the childhood will continue there but that we don't expect any new issues in the adulthood that's a good thing so whatever issues the child is already suffering we need to screen continuously we need to manage that continuously for example congenital heart disease it has to be operated uh, before it, it uh, that your patient will come in ccf and then all trouble and then better it, it gets gets operated uh, infertility okay. is an issue for the adulthood uh, and it's more common in males so that thing we we need to uh, screen and uh, yeah other whatever issues we discussed in uh, ch- childhood that will carry forward in the adulthood that we have to continuously screen and continuously manage that okay understood uh, so uh, you mentioned about early intervention that is you mentioned it as early as 6 months of age also can be early diagnosed uh, so if i just relate even prenatally to... it can be early diagnosed so okay even prenatally yeah. it can be early diagnosed okay okay so uh, sir early intervention and also the management of noonan syndrome uh, just highlight on how important can that be and <coughs> what role uh, does it play in the treatment out- outcomes any message or anything that you would want to highlight on so i think this is the most important part of the video because it's the most important question that uh, definitely if you early diagnose you manage early you will have good outcomes you'll reduce your mortality you'll reduce the morbidity <coughs> life expectancy generally it is said that the life expectancy of this children should be as equal to a normal child or normal adult okay so if uh, it is early diagnosed early managed early uh, whatever the follow up has been taken the life expectancy is uh, like it, it improves to the normal uh, children or normal adulthood great great so uh, thank you so much dr parth and it was lovely to be interacting with you and gaining all the insights about so this rare dangerous. disease and uh, we definitely need to spread awareness so that more and more professionals are abreast abreast about this uh, rare disease and they are able to diagnose it and catch it early so that uh, early screening can be provided to such children and they don't they usually their life expectancy also increases if it comes to an early diagnosis so uh, thank you so much for sharing all your valuable insights it was lovely to be interviewing you thank you same here Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.